Hey guys, Weave here. Today, we're going to be doing a video on Dragon Raja on 10 things I wish I knew when I started playing. So these tips will generally help you get into the game faster and prevent you from making the mistakes that I myself and other people made alongside me when playing the beta and other versions. So first up is XP. So XP is server based. So for example, when you first get into the game, you're going to rush to, I believe it's like level 32 day one. And you're going to kind of hit a wall at 32 to 34. And you just can't, you just can't go any further. But if you're say day three and you're up to level 50 and then somebody else logs in, they're going to have all this extra XP. And when they do one day, they're going to go from level one to like level 47 to only be a couple levels ahead of you who have played all three days. So the XP catch up mechanic on this game is actually quite insane. And it allows you to play multiple characters and level them up simultaneously by using the XP bonus. And you'll only be a couple levels behind other people. So it really isn't that much of a difference. Anyway, you can change class in game, which will change cost up to a million gold, I believe at the final transfer. But I prefer playing different characters to do different things anyway. So if that's your way, the XP on the service is very forgiving and something that you can work on to keep going. Okay, so next up, let's talk about clubs. So clubs contain a lot in Dragon Raja and they are very, very important. As you can see here, we have some of today's events and the member count right here is 160. I believe the max is like 250. We have the report card, we have the auction. We have crews, which shows you the people. We have buildings that you need to upgrade to need people to be active. We have bonus like salary and stuff that you can give up to other people. And down here, we have all the events that are available. A lot of these events can take your entire guild and you have to do many different things. And like, for example, completing one event and you get a rare item, this rare item will be sold to the guild or to the world. And that money is split up and give to everybody who participated in doing it. You also get XP and stuff from doing these events and currency and buffs and other things for the guild. So it's very highly recommended that you join a guild that you can actually play with and not just a silent guild where nobody talks. If you're the kind of person that just joins groups and doesn't talk and doesn't really participate in group content, this game honestly may not be for you because it's more of a requirement to be social in Dragon Raja than a suggested like many other games. Many of these events don't really require stats or gear. So don't worry if you're a little underleveled and play multiple characters and multiple servers. You're still an asset to your guild for activities. Okay, next up is allies. There's a lot of stuff in here, but we're mainly going to talk about recruitment and bounty. So if you go into the recruitment section, it's a bit like a gacha game where sometimes you get free draws. So when the draws come up on timers, make sure that you're getting your allies. You want to get as many allies as possible because it unlocks the ability to do missions and your allies also give you permanent stat boosts. So it's really important that you actively do them. I just got a five star EVA right there, which is really cool. So make sure you're doing the recruitment as much as you can. And then when you're done the recruitment, go to the bounty, which is basically send away your missions. Like for example, you click on your three allies and you send them away. And you can do 12 of these a day for really good rewards. So make sure that you're actually doing them. Okay, so buffs. So this, a lot of people didn't seem to get. So if you open up your menu by clicking on your character and go down into here in the buff, you'll see these little things down here. For example, dejected. You have not received happiness for a long time. So basically you haven't been given uh, like a gift thing. So some emojis are not available. Ravenous, you have not eaten or drank for too long. You cannot dash while you're ravenous. So you literally can't dash because you haven't eaten or drunk lately. Okay, so up here we have Frigid. The cold weather causes you to shiver. You receive increased damage by 8% and speed is increased by 8%. So I'm actually taking 8% more damage because I haven't eaten or I haven't eaten anything to uh, warm me up or use a buff on myself. So basically, if you're in a dungeon with cold, you're taking 8% more damage. So... And these effects are quite wide and varied. For example, if you're in bad weather when you're gathering for your profession, you could get less materials. But if you buff up correctly and, you know, 
cut it all back, then you would get more and then you would have more vitality to level up faster and get better dishes. So it's important to keep an eye on your buffs because sometimes they can really work against you and it, the game doesn't exactly throw them at you and tell you like, hey, you've got this debuff, so keep an eye on them. Okay, open world PvP. So open world PvP does exist. Uh, people can go around and attack you in most zones. Some zones are considered safe how it works is people will attack you and they will kill you. And when they do, you don't lose anything, you just respawn. But when they do this, they get like negative karma. And if they do this too often or if they attack in special areas, they get a lot of negative karma. And when they keep attacking people, their karma keeps going up. And when their negative karma goes up so high, people get a bounty to go and kill them. And from what I read is that if your bounty is too high and you've killed too many people, when people get a bounty sent out to kill you and somebody does kill you, you will drop your items. And I believe somewhere it said that you'd also drop your weapon. So you could actively lose your stuff if you went around in PvP too much. So there is a counter to that. Um, so I wouldn't overly worry about it and just leave peace mode on generally unless you're a PvP player. Okay, next up is Korea. So Korea, you have three different sections. You can do cuisines, you can do music i think it's called and i think the third one which is not available right now is taking photos i believe so in cooking there's a lot of stuff we'll talk more about this another time but you want to start this as soon as possible because you get vitality each day it restores and you want to use day one's vitality so it can restore the second day vitality is basically used to gather food and make you more effective at cooking and stuff like that so the later you start it the less vitality you're going to have so the more you're going to fall behind everyone else and the food is actually quite powerful. Uh, for example, if you click on some of these, you'll see that there's quite a lot of stuff down here that you can actually cook. You can use your stamina, which is different from vitality, and you've got stamina over here. And you can make two to sell per day, and you can make 10 for gifts per day. So you can basically give away free gifts to get other buffs and stuff like that. So it is important to start doing as soon as possible. Growth and up. So if you click your character up here and go down to growth, basically when you do things like, you know, get achievements or whatever else, you come in here and collect a lot of rewards, which include a lot of diamonds and a lot of other things that are very helpful. And up here is up. So basically what up does is it kind of helps you how to play the game. So at the beginning of the game, you go in here and you're like, well, how do I get stronger? And the game's telling you like, okay, well, your allies are weak. I've got a great C. So you click on this and it'll go to allies. It's telling me my core isn't very good so it'll take you to the core and even if you click here like how do i get more xp it'll tell you how to get more xp get more gold get more diamonds so it's, honestly it's basically like a mini game on how to get what you're looking for in the game so keep referring back to this when you're not sure what to do next okay so next up is retrieve so earlier i talked about xp uh if you start late and your lower your level is lower than the average server level then you'll get a lot more XP. One of the things you can do is go to the event and go to retrieve and go in here and you're able to spend gold or diamonds to get more. And what will happen is you'll use it and it'll take all of your, this XP and it'll turn it, it'll give it to you. Um, and basically you level up quite a bit. Uh, it does take a couple of resources, but it's definitely worth it. And it's a big catch up mechanic if you're falling behind. Okay, so when joining a party, uh, there is options to do some content where you just basically follow the leader in some of the content. For example, the dragon hunting. Uh, basically, you can just hit follow on the leader and the leader will go through into War 5 and you literally don't have to click a button. But if you are the leader, you get, I believe, more XP, more rewards, and you also get these tokens, which I believe you can access by clicking in here. So like leader badges is what you get. And if you go into here, you can buy these things with the leader badges. So by being the leader of the party, you do get extra rewards. So if you're not being lazy, it's definitely worth leading a party. You can also get assist points and buy this stuff up here, which as you can see, more maximum HP and stuff like that for basically doing content with lower players. It'll scale you down, but you'll get extra rewards for doing it. It'll take a while, but you know, it's extra buffs that you can eventually get. Okay, so number 10 would be events. Uh, events are basically activities that you do throughout each day. 
and there are quite a lot of them to do. There are two main things to keep in mind. First up would be activity. So when you do these activities, you get activity points and these activity points count towards the bar to the bottom and fill it up to get your rewards. It's basically making you a slave to dailies to get rewards. The next thing that you're gonna wanna pay attention to is solo XP today. So basically there's a maximum amount of solo XP that you can actually obtain so anything with a golden star on it counts towards that solo XP bar. So if that XP bar is full and you do something like Devil Wake, for example, you already have all your solo XP, so you don't actually get any more XP. If you do something like a profession and get a lot of solo XP and fill it up, it can be quite demoralizing and not want to do stuff like Devil Wake Wake. So just be aware of how quickly your solo XP is filling up. You'll notice other events like Nightwalker do not have a star on them. That means you can do them and still obtain XP because it's not considered solo XP. There is still a lot of stuff that's not considered solo XP, but it's something you really need to pay attention to because I personally wasted a lot of XP on this. Okay, that covers my 10 tips for Dragon Maja. Hopefully they come in helpful and save you a lot of time that I wasted personally on day one. Thanks for watching guys. Peace.